Please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. My name is Fire Kemi Unja. I'm a software engineer. Practically someone who solves problems with codes. Have you always wanted to be a software engineer? Yes. Yeah. And did you have a first degree in computer science or anything related? Uh, no. What did you study then? Fisheries and aquaculture technology. What school? Federal University of Technology, Akure. So, I mean, how did that happen? How did you want to study something related to software and computers and end up in fisheries? After writing German Band Post Jam on the list, uh, my name was linked to fisheries and aquaculture. And I didn't even know what that was, so I had to Google. It was a nightmare, but I'm good. How did you take the fact that you were going to start a course that you had absolutely no interest whatsoever in? I cried a lot. Cried, prayed, did everything. Um, it was unbelievable, just a point that it would change overnight, but it did not happen. So you were there for how many years? Five years. Yikes. So in that five year period, were there any things that you probably did to sort of build your tech skills, etc., for life after university? I would say no, because I was, I just kept hoping that maybe someone would come and save me and it didn't happen. And so let's say maybe I was a little bit depressed and just took it as part of life that that's my fit. You know, maybe I'm destined to be a fisherwoman or something. And, you know. So upon graduating from the university, at what point did you then switch careers? Or did you even, in fact, try to get a job as a fisheries graduate? Um, I did try a lot. I wasn't even good with my grades because it sucked. Everything was just the opposite of what I am used to. I love calculation. I love mathematics. I love to solve problems. But fisheries is more like you have to read, you have to cram, like just Though they were practical, but it was an uninteresting topic to me. Interesting to some, but to me it was uninteresting. And I picked up my interest back after school and during my service year, towards the end of my service year, my big brother was like, uh, I think it was more like a conversation, a joke and the likes. And I was like, I'm almost done with my service, so help me find a job. And my brother was like, I don't have any job except programming. And I'm like, ah, what's my head for? I can, I can learn it fast. And immediately I said that, I thought about it, that are you sure you can learn it fast? <laughs> you know, but um, I, mean, I just knew that it was just God doing something because I didn't even believe myself. And about two weeks or less than two weeks, my brother called me. I was like, um, okay, I'm going. To, I'm sending you a link. And then you do the, you read for the test and the likes. I'm like, I wanted to tell him, I was joking. And somebody not play with you. <laughs> and you know, but I just swallowed my thought and I was like, okay, thank you. When I saw the questions and the test. What was this? What was this? link to? It was Andela's um, preparation to, I think the first stage was a series of questions, um, like problem solving questions, um, programming different languages. And um, it wasn't familiar, although I did a CSE course in school, um, Q basic, but that was unrelated to what he sent me. Yeah, I was seven at the time and I had lots of time during my service year. I was practically in the morning, just go to the office wait till two o'clock and then close. So there was time for me to study, but because- I Which office to, are we talking about? I, I um, did my service here at um, Inibado. I can't remember the name right now, but it was a, an Greek setting and that was where, so it was, my work there was just to check water temperature, go to the office, wait till two and then close. So there was lots of time to do anything I wanted to which was a good use of my time. And then I had some friends that studied computer science in school. And I just made a call through, just networking. Please, I have these questions. I don't have any idea, can you help me? And yes, it, I mean, they were willing to help. And that was how I started and picked it up. And the likes. So after you took this, after you followed that link to the Andela thing, um, what were the next steps? What were the next things that you needed to do um, and what was that transition like for you? The transition was, it was an eventful one. So I would not say it was that strict. It was full of so many events. 
events of wanting to give up, events of thinking, why is this thing not working? I'm doing everything that should make it work. And then just notice it's because of a comma you missed or something. Events of happy moments. Oh, I designed this, it's working. So there were the happy moments, there were the unhappy moments, but overall, it was what the weight, it was what the process. So what did you need to learn? What were the, what were the skills you needed to learn? Um, and did you do any further training? Did you get on YouTube perhaps to check out like, you know, tutorial videos? What were the actual skills you needed to learn? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, still in Andela, I think the boot camp, I, I passed the test, the initial test. I passed the interview. The interview was more like talking. I talked my way through, I can't talk. <laughs> and um, then I got into the book camp and then I started hearing HTML. I started hearing CSS, JavaScript. I was like, excuse me, you said that this um, course was for someone who doesn't have any experience or little experience. But I've never heard this. This is practically like beauty the website. And um, the facilitator then was very nice and she sent me some materials. I remember at the end of that week, it was a form I could build and the form was very big. I mean, it was just, it was not good. But I had a peek of what my career should look like in software engineering, if I focused. So the bootcamp practically gave me an idea of what to focus on. Um, okay, these are the interesting bits. This is how you do it. And so after the bootcamp, I didn't, I didn't get the job. Um, that gave me a light and a path to start with. And um, I started with online courses. I think I practically uh, majored um, with Udemy. And it was really good because you could see different, you have options to choose which course you buy. And so you could also see reviews and know the kind of tutor the person was, if it's someone you can go with, which I think are basics to when you want to start programming, what should you look out for? So I think the first thing that I looked out for was, okay, what exactly do I want to learn? Which is, social engineering is wide. You have several languages, you have several things. There are game developers, there are a lot of things. So what, why do you want to go into software engineering? What are the programming languages you want to learn? What would help you to achieve what you want to learn? I think some ticks would be some tips for me is learn something that people want and so i just googled it what's the most widely why am i studying javascript why should i do javascript and then i want javascript but that's not enough why should i and then i at that time it was number two on the list of um wanted um, tech, um tools and so it was really good python was the first at the time i don't know what's the ratio now and so yeah that was interesting okay this is something companies want so i don't learn it and then i'm redundant in the market and afterwards started learning started pick, taking courses on javascript and the likes so these were steps and it was more like a full-time job for me for a period of six months um i was just it was more like going to the office in the morning, coming back late at night, all you're doing is learning software engineering and learning courses. How much did it cost for you to get some of this um, education on Udemy? It was relatively um, cheap, it wasn't expensive. I think it was about $10, um, $11, which is about three or 5,000 um, at the time. So, and I don't think it has changed that much, maybe with um, an increase of five dollars maybe now it's fifteen dollars it hasn't changed that much so it's relatively cheap so oftentimes we hear software um companies right and um maybe even recruiters say stuff like you don't have to have any skills just come have a curious mind be teachable etc how true is that statement that just about anyone can be a software developer or a programmer or work in that area of tech um, I'd say it's, there's a good measure of truth in it. However, it still depends on the person because you have to know why you want to study it. If not, you get frustrated because something is not going the way you want. And it doesn't always work for people that 
once you're done um, learning the tools or the likes, you get a job that pays you millions of dollars, like people exaggerate a lot. So if wh why you want to learn, um, why you want to come into software space is just because of the money, no passion, uh, you might get a little bit frustrated. But if you have a good reason, reason like you want to be valuable in the economy and you're willing to do anything to get that done, you don't want to you don't want to be redundant, you want your skill, you want to use, do something meaningful with your life. Those are good reasons that can push you, even when it looks like it's getting tougher. So yes. What possible. were the most difficult parts of um, the process of, you know, teaching yourself some of these skills as a software engineer? I'd say the most challenging part was um, having to having to wake up so early in the morning <laughs> I don't like, and then doing one particular thing for the rest of as many days as it takes. I'm still a software engineer. And, but it gets better actually. It gets better. The frustrating part drops off when you begin to understand some of these basics. You make a mistake today, say you are writing or trying to write something and then you knew that, oh, you missed a semicolon at the point. That's why your LinkedIn is screaming at you. Or you missed something, you missed a syntax and, and the likes. So the mistakes you make, makes you get better. So it doesn't always, um, you don't make the same mistake over and over again. I mean, you learn from it and then it gets better, you get joyful. You have the sense of fulfillment that you're fulfilling <laughs> your purpose or something. So it gets better. So software developer fellowships often promise um, developers at different levels great jobs with Fortune 500 companies, some of the biggest companies across the world. You know, on their websites, they list these people as clients. Um, for people who are just getting into this area of tech, is it wise for them to expect to get jobs with some of these people? And do they eventually get to work with some of these big companies? Um, I'd say, Maybe it's wise to expect big things. It's mm. really wise to expect big things because that's what we drive you. So it's a good thing. I mean, that they make it sound really good. I mean, it motivates you when you want to give up. You think about it. Do you want to work for Google? Do you want to work for the big companies? So it's a good thing. On the other end, I'd say um, maybe there should be a balance. And um, it might not always, you might not always earn the very big money as a junior developer. So they are going to hit a junior developer hands less than maybe mid level, then you start progressing. So you don't just enter into um, so much money as that. So you grow into it. But with patience, with tenacity, with continuous growth and development, you get there eventually. So you said earlier on that you did not um, get past the boot camp, right? You were not recruited after that boot camp um, season. How were you able to get back into the mix? I remember that, I mean, I already got like, it was more like I was put on a pinnacle and it could, I could see everything that I needed to do, everything I needed to know. And so it was like a fight. You beat me this time, I'm coming back to beat you the next time. So I knew that the next time Andela is opening up this fellowship, I'm coming back hot. And so that drove me to constantly um, do everything I could, give myself to learning every day. Even midnight sometimes I'm there learning because I had a goal, I set a goal. And so when the opportunity came, I think about five months later, thereabout, I was ready. I knew that this one, we kill it. Like this one, this is, this is the thing I've been preparing for. So that, that really helped because I've already um, been beaten and I've learned and now I'm ready to take a hop. So the HTML, CSS and JavaScript that were new to me about four months ago, were now my pals. Like we sleep, wake up together. And so we're best friends. What do you want me to do? And then it was really good. And I remember the interview I had for the second trial. The interviewer was like, for someone who just started writing code, I mean, you're very impressive. And I was like, don't know. You don't know what I've been doing. So yeah, it was, it was, was really good. 
Yeah. So oftentimes people expect that people who are software developers, um, there are sort of there are some expectations that people have of them. You've touched on the salary beats. Um, people, there's also a lifestyle angle to it. People expect that people who are in tech, maybe are software developers, often have to live a life. They have to be quirky. They have to be weird. You know, they have to have some very interesting personality traits. Um, are you like that? And do you think that that's what marks people in tech, particularly as software people? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I think software is, is like every other job, right? Like it's fun. It's just that um, some people get to express themselves more by being, you know, being quirky and being alone. That's their personality. I feel like your personality will reflect. Um, so I have some colleagues that, aside from being a software engineer, they also major in sport. Some of them do music, they do other things. So they are not living a boring life. So it depends on you, but to be, um, to be fair, at the initial start of your career, you don't actually want to be doing a lot of things. So you're starting this career, you have to be devoted 100%. So yes, you might be alone for that one or two years, it's a price you must pay. But after you get your feet on the ground, you can explore, you can open up, have a life and do what you want to do. Now at the start you said you always wanted to be a software engineer. Did you have any particular companies you probably wanted to work for or particular solutions you wanted to create when you sort of dreamed for the first time that you wanted to be a software engineer? Yeah, so what motivated me from the beginning was my brother loved watching movies, action movies, and some of these movies we have um, this nerd that are always in the car or someplace um, doing the old work for them, telling them, yeah, it's time to go in, you know, don't go in and the like, so all those things. So I was like, I want to be like this nerd and, and the like, so that was a, a quick now for me. So coming into software engineering, I wanted to do fun and I mean amazing things action things and the likes I've not done any action movie or anything or hacked into anybody's software but I think I'm living the life because I'm solving problem I mean I've worked for an um, accounting um, organization solve problem in the accounting system I'm currently working for an e-learning platform and you know so I'm still living the life <laughs> so where are you right now um, uh, I still have a long way to go, but I can say that thus far, oh God has been faithful. It's, it's, um, it's been a dream that, you know, it wouldn't have been possible without, with, with just my ambition or with just my passion. So I would still say that all the way, I, God was really pushing me and I mean there were times that I would practically be like who sends me work like who sends me my brother makes this joke and I think at the point when it was getting too hard I told him that I wanted to start um, doing catering I wanted to do um, puff puff make cake and likes it wasn't really like that's what I wanted to but I was getting too tough like I'm like my head was soon you know but Thank God I did not go into those things. I still um, persevered. And so I can say between then and now, I cannot be frustrated enough to say I want to drop software engineering. I've passed that level by the grace of God. And I am no longer in junior level also. I mean, I'm progressing. So it's a work in progress. And I can say this four years, I think I should be heading to four years of experience has been a lot of growth, learning and development because being relevant in this field is about continuous learning. So you cannot say you've known it all. You just sleep one day and wake up, you don't have a job anymore. So you have to keep learning. So I'm still there. What's the most exciting um, projects you've been on? And perhaps the one that you are most proud of? Yeah, so um, I'd say my current um, role my current work now is the most exciting i've been on every other work i've done has been very exciting um so even if i'm to place them side by side they all have their distinct use i mean solve problems for accountants that's a big deal um I'm, the only reason why i have more sentiment for what i'm doing right now is because it helps kids 
Um, it's an e-learning platform, the Bite Size, PPC Bite Size. So it helps kids, it's free. It helps kids learn during the pandemic. I mean, no school, but they were using the platforms we built to learn. That's a good thing. And um, yeah, so I'd say that's why maybe I can say it's the most, it's the best part because of the kids involved. How did you get the BBC job? Through Andela. Um, they are a partner of Andela. So I am an Andelan and a BBC engineer. When you look back on your time as a fisheries undergraduate in Futa, is there anything that you learned in your five years that you are using right now as a software engineer? No, there was nothing. Um, I'd say the most interesting part of my school days was the fellowship. Aside that, it was really, really frustrating to even go to classes because I don't even want to be there. But then, I mean, I think there are these times that you just think because you're in a situation, maybe there's a purpose for it. But I don't know the purpose yet. Maybe it will show, but I still thank God for the process. Before I let you go, what would your advice be to anyone who's watching you right now, who is perhaps an undergraduate and is studying a course that the school gave them or that their parents want them to study, but they would much rather be software engineers just like you? Um, I'd say that don't be frustrated, don't give up. Um, it's still possible. I mean, if you're still young, you can still do anything, even if you're old. I have um, um, someone who is over 40, currently a colleague, and she's just started out. And she's um, doing an intern with BBC. And she's doing it, so if you're not even 40 or 50, then, I mean, you're still sharp enough to learn it. So don't worry, finish your course and come out and be a good, in fact, there's nothing they'll teach you in school that would benefit you anyway. So come and, come and see action outside of school. So as a Texas, are you rich, rich, or are you just, are you getting there? Are you getting paid? I'm getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Fire Kemi, for having this interview with us and this conversation. We wish you all the best in the future. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye.